All right, guys. Well, I don't know if you're... <laughs> Never know what this camera is actually looking at. Uh, but it is a spectacularly gorgeous, I mean, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapsed Mayan Indian civilization. Uh, <laughs> here in the Yucatan Peninsula of old Mexico on this spectacularly gorgeous. It is a Monday afternoon, January 30th, 2023. And uh, as they say, we are sitting in the middle of a former civilization, a both a former and a future collapsed civilization. So I can't think of a better place than right here to bring you a... Uh, how Black Rock, how our friends at Black Rock Corporation are reading the tea leaves for our own civilization. This is coming from, uh, what is the name of this website? OpenDemocracy.net. This is Economics Journalism that puts people and planet first. And I just now noticed that uh, what I thought was the article, are you telling me I have, that I have internet over here? I am sitting in the middle of the rainforest Let's see if I actually have internet here in the jungle. Uh, unbelievable. Let's see if this gets us to the article I was wanting to read. Unbelievable. We have internet in the rainforest. <laughs> Go figure. Thank you, Elon Musk, I guess. Open democracy. BlackRock says we are all doomed. It is being optimistic. The world's largest asset manager has forecast systemic economic chaos. The reality is even worse. And this is by some fellow I've never heard of named James Meadway. This is James Meadway uh, reviewing BlackRock's overly optimistic report that we are doomed. Take it away. Open democracy. <clears throat> the working assumption for governments and central banks across the world is that at some point soon, everything will get back to normal. Our economies will return to either pre-pandemic or sometimes even pre-2008 crash levels. These beliefs are reinforced by media economics commentary and across political parties. But what if they're wrong? The world's largest asset manager overseeing $10 trillion in assets across the globe thinks we are instead entering a period of increased risk and uncertainty defined by unavoidable recession and much higher inflation. So we're going to have recession and much higher inflation, I guess, according to BlackRock. BlackRock, a well-connected, influential, and hugely profitable pillar of global capitalism, made these predictions in its 2023 Global Investment Outlook Report. Quoting the report, <clears throat> quote, The Great Moderation, so this is the Great Moderation that we're moving into this year, the four-decade period of largely stable activity and inflation is behind us. Okay, we have left the Great Moderation so since we're no longer in the great moderation, where are we heading? <clears throat> Instead, BlackRock forecast a new regime with a, quote, brutal trade-off 
falling living standards for the many becoming profits for the few. This reality of a world undergoing fundamental transformation and disrupting our settled modes of existence has so far barely entered the economic mainstream. For BlackRock to break with this consensus might potentially be one of the first signs of a broader shift in how major institutions in the Western economies view the world. Annual food inflation, for instance, in the UK rose to 13.3%, an all-time high last month, according to the trade body, the British Retail Consortium, ahead of the official government figures out later this month. This situation, though slightly worse in the UK due to a flawed Brexit deal and the falling value of the pound, which is critical as a major food importer, is common across the globe even as wholesale energy prices have dropped from their summer 2022 peak the price of food everywhere is soaring i was thinking about doing a report on the price of eggs as an example of this the united nations forecasts show a major risk of widespread famine in the global south over the next year with harvests continuing to underperform. This global spike in prices over the past 18 months was initially described by the economic establishment as transitory. Then as inflation continued remorselessly upwards, familiar explanations reappeared, notably excessive worker power, but real wages in the global north are still falling, and excessive printing of money through quantitative easing, but we have been running QE since 2009. The economic profession as a whole, and institutions such as the major central banks have typically written down the obvious evidence of global instability as temporary factors rather than something more systemic. This means we are trapped with central banks that still think pushing up interest rates to induce a recession is a smart way to bring down inflation. We have governments committed to holding down wages and salaries while allowing profits to explode. But BlackRock believes the world is now, quote, shaped by supply that involves brutal trade-offs. In other words, the world economy is less effective at supplying goods and services than it was. <clears throat> the after effects of the pandemic have caused supply chain problems, as we all know, but they also think an aging population means fewer workers pushing up the cost of labor that geopolitical tensions will disrupt global supply chains and that the shift to net zero carbon emissions will involve, quote, demand and supply mismatches. Uh, I think I have someone uh, interested in what the crazy gringo is doing back in the woods. The security guard is thinking, what in the hell is this crazy gringo up to? Am I a security threat to the condominium residents here? We're, we're going to see if we're going to get visited by a Mexican cop. Put all this together, and BlackRock thinks inflation will, 
BlackRock thinks inflation will come down to the 2% level we have been used to only if central banks are prepared to, quote, crush their economies into a severe recession. Since that is unlikely, according to James, inflation will stay much well inflation will stay much higher than we are used to combined with a miserable recession over the next year or so. So uh, I'm a little bit confused by this. He is he is saying that he does not believe that the he, he's not following this theory about the central banks purposefully uh, crushing their own economies to bring down inflation. So according to whoever James is, uh, since that's not going to happen, inflation will stay much higher than we are used to combined with a miserable recession over the next year or so. And so uh, this is how uh, James is, uh, I can't remember this fellow's last name, is reading this report. But BlackRock's predictions do not cover everything. Its report misses the longer-term effects of corona panic, both in terms of the impact on health care and, as we're currently seeing, continuing waves of infection. So, uh, apparently James is thinking that corona panic is not quite as over as some people <clears throat> think it is. The report also misses critically the wider ecological impacts of climate change, biodiversity loss, and resource depletion. It is at least possible to imagine a world where peace returns rapidly to Ukraine and the subsequent disruption to global food and fertilizer trade are reduced. It is not possible to imagine a world where climate change and ecological destruction are thrown into reverse. Indeed, some of the effects felt today, notably biodiversity loss, are irreversible. This twofold combination has led ecologist Nicholas Bure to describe a quote climate super cycle of food shortages and rising prices running well into the future. Um, and finally, BlackRock misses the extreme profits that shortages over the last year have generated for a select few multinationals such as those supplying oil and gas. It's that last part that is critical. A more unstable world affects everyone, but it will affect everyone differently. For most of us, on the wrong side of food price hikes and extreme weather, the future is not great, but for the lucky few, shortages have been turned through price rises into massive profits. Yep, yep, yep. So who is James Meadway? Let's see if we can find some... Uh, if my internet will tell us. James Meadway hosts the new weekly economic podcast, Macrodose, and he is the director of the Progressive Economy Forum. Previously, he was economic advisor to the shadow chancellor and chief economist at the New Economics Foundation. So, uh, if you enjoyed that story, you might also enjoy, are we seeing 
the collapse of the dollar-dominated global economy. I've been having this rant since I went down this rabbit hole in 2008. Uh, they were having this very same debate and analysis. Are we seeing the collapse of the dollar-dominated global economy? I see absolutely zero, zero evidence of that here in Mexico. Uh, okay, this is mostly a British site, I see, but anyway. Uh, and there you go, that's what's on the mines of Black Rock. And I am being uh, hammered by sweat bees out here in the jungle. And so, uh, you know, talking about food prices, uh, I was just commenting elsewhere on the internet today. So I just went to a Mexican dentist, and it cost me $15 to get a tooth pulled, to walk in with no appointment, paid $15 to get a tooth pulled, and then you go over to the the little uh, fruit market three doors down from the dentist and what we bought we bought in Mexico in during the growing season we bought one pineapple one cantaloupe one mango one banana four tangerines and a little coconut candy bar and, I, I mean, I wasn't paying much attention. I, I just assumed, I would have assumed by looking at it that we were going to be paying $3 for this uh, small bag of fruit, uh, $5 at the most. In Austin, Texas, that bag of food probably would have been, uh, I'm guessing, $10. And uh, take a wild guess what our bag of fruit cost. How about $15? The same price as to get a tooth pulled. Now, uh, I vehemently believe there are two price structures here in Mexico. The gringo price and the local price. And uh, that a local would have paid about $3. But who knows, guys? I don't know. It was... Uh, that was the most expensive little bag of fruit I have ever bought in my entire life. And I have learned uh, to ask the price before purchasing a product without a price tag on it. Anyway, but I got to get out of the sweat bees. Run from the... God, these... Run from the stinging insects of the rainforest back into the safe haven of my air conditioning in my condo while I still can. Bye, guys. I don't know if this cop is going to apprehend me when I erupt from the forest and ask me what the hell I was doing.